Hello and welcome to the second episode this week, an in-depth look into the uh, Battle of Alberta teams, Edmonton and Calgary in the NHL. So I think, Salsa, you're going to start off with the Calgary Flames. Yep, we're going to start off with Calgary. So Calgary grabbed a bunch of good players in the offseason. They grabbed Blake Coleman as a, as a very good um, winger. Uh, Trevor Lewis, good depth player. Uh, Nikita Zadorov, Eric Goodbranson, also good depth defenseman. Former Oiler, Tyler Pitlick. Um, mm-hmm. Brad Richardson, and goalie Dan Vladar. Or Vladar, however you say it. He was a pretty good backup for uh, in Boston. Yeah, he only played five games. Yeah. Um, 2.6, or 3.4 goals against average, actually. And... Point eight eight six in those five games, so he's still better than uh, Riddick. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I guess to back up Markstrom, they brought in Vladar. They did lose though Geo to the expansion draft, which is pretty big blow. Yeah, and you and I are actually talking about that in yes. the last in two episodes ago, I guess, in the podcast episode. Where uh, that's a big loss, man. That's not only just like a veteran defenseman, that's leadership, leadership in the dressing yes, room. Yeah, exactly. Um, they also uh, lost Derek Ryan, which Oilers signed. Um, Josh Leifo and Joachim Nordstrom and Nikita Nestrov is also who they lost during the offseason. So besides Ryan and Giordano, just some death players that I yeah, guess they wanted enough. to just lose the contracts. But besides that, Calgary still has a decent forward group. Matthew Kachuk, Elias Lindholm, Johnny Goudreau, Sean Monaghan, still four really, really good players for Calgary. And then, like I said, they brought in Blake Coleman, so that will definitely boost their offense a little bit. Uh, they still have Andrew Majapani, uh, Dylan Dubé, good young players coming into, the, uh, into their system. Uh, Michael Backlund, still pretty good center, so still good player. Uh, Milan Lucic, pretty... Former Edmonton former Ed- <laughs> <laughs> Yes, former Edmonton Oiler. Um, I guess he has his strengths, which is his strength, but that's it, pretty much. His physical strength is... Or his, his strength as a hockey player is his physical strength as a man. Yes. Of just being able to move things around and beat the end. Man, you <laughs> put skates on an elephant and it skates better than Milan Lucic. It's not even kidding. He's probably like, better than one of the Lucic. worst hockey players in the league right now. It's embarrassing. But they can't move him, so. Thank God Holland found him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, with the loss of Giordano, their defense now looks like Noah Hannafin, Rasmus Anderson as probably being like their top pair. Uh, Zadorov and Tanev are still pretty good D. And Val Mackey was a very good young defenseman. And um, Erica Branson. So uh, they have good players. Kind of like the Detroit Lions defense. They can pop off at any moment, but... Still probably not their strong point. Um, goalies, Jacob Markstrom, still very good goalie. Ha- kind of had an off year last year, but uh, it's a new year. Start off strong, and hopefully he can help Calgary make the playoffs, which I think we projected them not making the playoffs this year. Yeah, we put them in fifth in the division. Yeah. In fifth or sixth, battling with LA for that spot. Yeah, like last year, their four group didn't do so well like compared to other teams so you just gotta hope for the best i guess and yeah a bunch of the moves they made this year were just really to please sutter sutter's style is a very hard-nosed physical game and i think they'll be able to like win some games because of it just they're gonna just beat down their opponent yeah didn't sutter just come in like during the year so yeah I'd... so i think a lot of these a moves full year of sutter. around i'm like louis yeah. will probably do better with sutter uh Lucic was such a good player, man. He was just so good. And then we signed him, and Shirelli just brought him in, and now he became terrible, and now I hate him because of how terrible he was with the Oilers. And like, now he's still terrible. He's still pretty bad, right? But it's like, at the end of the day, 
that is a very that's going to be a very tough team to play against just because of their physicality. Like even their forward group, like their their top players in the forward group, like Matthew Kachuk. Kachuk is. Although he yeah. turtle, like he <laughs> he will literally hide from any fight. He he still is like a pest in there, like a, a and he's still a really less, good too. A, a, a less intelligent Brad Marchand, let's just put it that way. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, looking at doing a more in depth look, do you, are you happy with your projection of fifth or sixth in the division? I could see them fifth, at most, fourth if they're lucky. If they if they play like they played like a couple years ago where like uh, Kachuk, Kudrow, Monaghan, and Lindholm all got like 75 points or more, then they could probably squeak in, but I don't think they're going to be able to to make it to the playoffs this year. I think their signing of Blake Coleman was a colossal overpayment. I think Blake Coleman's a good player. I don't think he's, they're paying him like first or second line money. He's a good third pairing guy. Like 4.9 million? Yeah, it's too much for Blake Coleman, dude. That is way too much for Blake Coleman. I mean, I like the fact... I wanted him for Edmonton, to be completely honest with you. I wanted him for our third line um, because he can play center, left wing, or right wing. He literally plays all of it. Um, but 4.9 is way too much. It's way too much. Yeah. So, But he's he's the Sutter style, man. He, he plays a very hard-nosed, physical, grinder game. Uh, that's going to be a tough team to get some goals against just because... But, like... I mean, that's an outdated style of hockey, in yeah. my opinion. I think pe- teams are going to figure out how to beat them and just go from there. Like, we're going to see, I guess, our first battle of Alberta um, soon. It's not going to be too far into the season. Uh, Sunday they played in the preseason game. Like, we'll, we'll see a few games there. But, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I don't think it's going to be uh, – I don't think they're a very good team. No. Their defense is their strength. It's still a really good defense, but – but other than that, not like score once too much. Once Markstrom goes down, if he goes down, he's always had injury problems. So yeah, yeah. Once he does go they, down, they they're screwed if if he does. Yeah, so. I agree. Um, so yeah, moving on from Calgary to Edmonton, uh, we're both Oilers fans. So full disclosure, this might be a little biased to, in, in some people's Definitely eyes. Definitely gonna be biased. So, a couple big moves. The Oilers made a few a, a few moves this year. Um, I think they're probably their two biggest, in my opinion, would be the sign or the trade of Warren Fogel, uh, and then the Duncan Keith trade. I think those are two massive ones. Um, a, a, a few other additions. Zach Hyman uh, signing that contract is huge. The re-signing of Ryan Nugent Hopkins was absolutely That's massive. Huge. The contract extension of Darnell Nurse was huge. Signing of Derek Ryan. Signing of Cody CC, the re-signing of Mike Smith, and BBMs. BBMs. Yamamoto. Oh, Yamamoto signing. Yeah, signing of Yamamoto is a nice deal as well. And then Devin Shore. Um, those are some pretty big acquisitions uh, made by the Oilers or signings. They did have a few losses though. I think their their loss of Adam Larson will be. It's really going to show. I think this year, um, and I think. Honestly, so they didn't re-sign uh, Jujar, who went to the Blackhawks. Dmitry Kulikov left for the Wild. Um, and I, again, the biggest loss, in my opinion, though, is going to be Larson. I think that's a big one. I mean, most a lot of their depth guys went and signed over in Europe or different NHL teams. But I think the Oilers' depth is forward is, is a strength now as opposed to in the past where it was a weakness. Forward is probably, like, one of the strongest, maybe, in the NHL. Definitely top six. Yeah. 100% the top six. Yeah. And what I like about our forward group, too, it's like the very first line projecting right now is probably going to be Zach Hyman, Connor McDavid, and Jesse Pugliarvi. Um, Pugliarvi and McDavid together last year have shown they play really well together. Pugliarvi's a big body. He took some, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he took some boxing lessons over the summer. So he's learning. How, like, yeah, he's, so he's like learning how to just, you know, just I think that's going to help. <laughs> well, stand up for himself, but I also think that's just part of learning how to play a more physical game. I think it's a huge a, a, that can't be understated. So that was yeah, that was a big. That's a nice good first line. Second line, I can very much see it being re- reuniting the dry sidle Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Kyler Yamamoto line. Oh yeah, but if you look the left side in our top two lines, both Hyman and Nuge, they both can play center as well. So then, that's the, that's that line. The third line, as of right now, it's looking like it will probably be Derek Ryan in the middle. A good right shot defensive forward. Uh, with Warren Fogle on the left, on the right. 
Zach Cassian. Zach Cassian really needs to step up compared to what he did last year. I think he, um, I think with fans he'll do better. Yeah, as long stands. as we, as long as we get playoff Cassian with Vogel and Ryan, that could probably be a very good like. It's a good six line. checking line, man, yeah. and I think it can still produce because I think Zach Cassian's shot is underrated. I His think he's got a really good shot. Too. I think Derek Ryan is a good defensive forward that we need desperately. And then um, as a as a right winger, Cassian can play can play pretty well. So, yeah. but also that's another thing too. Like that center, Derek Ryan can, depending on how Ryan McLeod does, I think it can interchange right. Um, and then our fourth line, it's as of right now, it's looking like it'll be Devin Shore paired with Ryan McLeod. And now the, the right winger is a little uncertain because of a certain vaccine situation with uh, Josh Archibald. Yep. So he will either get the vaccine, get the one shot, and then play. Or, I honestly, if he doesn't get the vaccine, I don't see him sending it at Edmonton. No. I see him either sending him down to Bakersfield or just getting rid of him at all, overall. I'm going to say he's probably not going to be here by Christmas. I it think sucks because he's, be he's a good defensive forward, like a good grinder. I, I liked him as a player. Um, I liked him too, yeah. But he's replaceable, man. Bottom six, yeah. A bottom six winger like that that don't really only plays like a penalty specialist. We signed Colton Skivier to PTO, and they are pretty identical. So I I won't miss him. It's sorry, basically either get the vaccine or you're gone. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. that's our forward group. Not bad. Um, and then we have, we have, we didn't even mention Dylan Holloway, who is out for a few weeks because of an injury. So that's a big loss for us. Tyler Benson is also going to be challenging for a position in the forward group. Um, overall, yeah, I'm happy with the Oilers forwards. Really, I am. Um, the Fogel for Bear trade, I think, is an okay trade. Just because we had Barry, Bouchard already. I don't think we need three offensive defensemen on the right side. Bear is very similar playing style to what... I mean, more of a defensive guy than Bouchard, but I do think Bouchard is already better than Bear. I oh, think he will just yeah. get better anyway, so... And, and then I have Warren, a lot of respect for Bearman. I loved him as a player. And Warren Fogel, Fogel, like the way he plays, would definitely help the Oilers. Yeah, for sure. we dealt from a position of strength to a position for a position of weakness. Like Fogel can play left and right, a penalty special, a penalty kill specialist who can also chip in offensively. That's something that killed us in the last few years. We had no offense for a bottom six, and I think with this bottom <laughs> six right now, I think so. I mean, even Cooper Marodi can challenge for a spot down yeah, there Cooper and like Marody. play some good minutes. I, I honestly, yeah, I feel. This could be a good, a good, and, and worst case scenario, we move um, Nuge from center or from left wing to third line center, and then we pick we Holloway maybe comes up or Bensman comes up and plays there. Like we have the pieces that can actually change to three offensive lines, right? Yeah, I'm just a little scared for our bottom six right now, and to, but I think they can do it. It just has to prove it. And then looking at our defense, like our top pairing. From last year returns this year, and Darnell Nurse and Tyson Berry. I think that's a legit NHL top pairing. Um, Darnell Nurse, uh, we I, we mentioned in the Team Canada episode. I think he's a very strong player who can play both offensively and defensively. He had a hell of a year last year. Heck of a year, dude. Yeah. Heck of a year. Uh, he played so well. Uh, he's a big dude who will will play a physical game, which is what we need from him. So, and then Tyson Berry just knows. How to provo- how to provide some offense with McDavid, which is it can't be understated. Yeah, he really. was like the leading scorer and defenseman yeah. last year. So our second pairing is probably our biggest question mark. Um, the second pairing right now it looks to be Duncan Keith and Cody Cece. I think I think Keith still has a lot to prove and still a lot of hockey to play. Um, I don't think he's going to play for another ten years, but I do think he, for, he'll finish out this contract. And I think he will play quite well. I think he's no longer a first-pairing defenseman, similar to OEL in Vancouver in our last episode that we talked about. But I do think Duncan Keith is a very good second-pairing guy. Um, everybody looks at his Chicago numbers like, yeah, okay, dude, Chicago's a terrible team in the last couple of years. Like, they were a bad team, especially last year. They weren't yes. great defensively. Yeah. But he was always paired with a young guy out there. Like, it's, the numbers show that with Duncan Keith with the more proven more actual, like, legit NHL player on his side, like an old veteran, they play a lot better. So Duncan Keith, I think his intangibles that he provides are, like, massive for this team as well. So I think that will be a big a big plus for the Oilers. And then our third pairing right now, the only certain one is Bouchard on the right. I think that's the only thing we're certain about. I do think his left pairing, 
Uh, yeah, I think it will be Slater Cuckoo. That's what I'm thinking too, yeah. Dave Tibbet mentioned his immediate availability that they actually asked to be putting East McDavid line all, all training camp. And it's a lot of respect because, you know what, if you can shut down McDavid, you can then, shut down almost everybody else yeah. in the league, right? So I think Cuckoo and Bouchard are a good pairing. I think Cuckoo's like a nice veteran presence, a stable guy back there to, to be able to help provide the, me- the mentorship that Bouchard needs. I think Cuckoo plays better with... Um, yeah, I think Cuckoo will play a little bit better with uh, Bouchard than Keith would in that position. I think Keith is a better defenseman, but I think Bouchard, or sorry, I think Cuckoo is a better fit to play with Bouchard just for the, his style of game. Um, yeah, I can see that. Um, another thing, too, so the subtractions from the blue line, we mentioned Bear earlier. I mean, I, I would take that. Bear, I take Bouchard over Bear, so that's okay with me. Um and then next, another subtraction was Caleb Jones, but I take I take Keith over Jones every day of the week. I would too. Hunt, like Jones could play both sides, but Keith's veteran leadership, Keith's winning pedigree, like all of those things are things you cannot take away from that man. Yeah, like the Keith trade, I liked the Keith trade. It's just like a lot his of cap people. A lot. Yeah, his cap yeah. hit. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think yeah. his cap hit is huge, but at the, at the end of the day, like you're paying for all those intangibles, and I think he will be able to provide leadership to help our core right now. I think he, Nurse, Dreisaitl, Nuge, McDavid are all going to become better hockey players and human beings after playing with Keith and just learning from Keith. So those are huge. Uh, and then now we're going to get to the goalie. So <laughs> actually, correction. Our depth in, in defense is pretty decent too. Like I didn't even mention. So Chris Russell like, right now is probably penciled in as a number seven. But yeah. we have a William Lagason who's pretty decent. Lagesson. We have Philip Broberg who's who's starting to you know work his, work way, his up. way up. I do yeah. think he starts in the minors. I I'm really excited to watch the Bakersfield Condors this year. Honestly, if Broberg can like steal a spot, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. But I would yeah like like, like you said I would definitely rather have him start in Bakersfield. I think he starts in Bakersfield solely yeah. because if he makes the team, it's either the seventh D. I don't want him playing no. seventh D minutes. I want him playing top pairing in the minors or as a six D, but I don't want a, a Bouchard Broberg pairing this year. I want that in three, four years. Yes. I don't want that this year. Yeah. No, right? I agree. I agree. So, um, Broberg is, is coming up there. Sam Rukov just broke his jaw, but he's a pretty good prospect. It's going to be coming up too. We don't have many on the right side, unfortunately, but I think our right side is set for the future for, for a decent amount, at least. For a decent amount of time. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we signed CC to like a multi-year. Yeah. Deal. Four years. I think it's a little bit too much money, but you know but what like we needed a guy. Gonna, so and he's a defensive, gonna, shut, he's a defensive guy too, right? Yeah, and if we're going to develop our defenseman, then that's, I would say that's totally fine. Yeah. So I think that's decent. I mean, so looking at the goalies, I mean, we have our starting goalie is Mike Smith. Mike Smith played last year exceptionally well, and he aged one year between last year and this year. Yeah, I think that, that won't be – I think Mike Smith will be a competent starter this year. I don't think it's realistic to expect the same numbers and the same stuff as last year, but I do think it is realistic to expect – uh, him to not have like a significant regression. So yeah. I, I'm happy with with how they're with with the starter, the backup situation. So unfortunately, Alex Stalock mm-hmm. has a heart condition due to COVID, and he's unable to play this year. Probably will never be able to play again, unfortunately. So I would have um, rather have him. And that's what I was about yeah. to say. Like Stalock and Koskin, and we're gonna fight for that second for that backup position, right? So. Super unfortunate that, that ended up happening. Um, I feel for the guy, Matt. I, I really, really, really do. Um, but it looks like right now it will be Miko Koskinen and Mike Smith. I'm, I'm thinking, so we have two guys in the, in the system, Stuart Skinner and then that, um, that Russian off. kid, Konovalov. Uh, both of those guys, the Oilers, I think, so the Oilers didn't draft that, uh, the Wall Street. Wall Street. Wall Street. And I think it's because they... they feel really good about one of Konovalov and or Skinner. Uh, Konovalov had some really good numbers in the KHL last year once he was healthy. He lost his job because he got injured, but he had like an, in the upwards of 920 save percentage for a long time. So I, I do think they have some confidence in the guy. But that's the thing. So if Smith is injured or Smith doesn't play the way he can, then this is not... This will not go well this year. Not e- like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Just this like will go most terribly. of our Western Canadian teams, if the starter goes down, then 
and that's like most of the NHL teams too. I think like most most teams have like the, their start. Like for example, like Tampa Bay, F Vasilevsky goes down. It's a big dip between Vasilevsky and their backup, right? Like, I think it's I guess, but yeah. but last year Smith was a position of strengths, right? But I think with our with our more more depth in the forward group, um, our defense I think is a little less physical, but I do think it is better than it was last year. Just with the additions of Keith in that second pairing, I think he's a huge upgrade to either one of uh, Kulikov or Jones, and then. Yes. Um, Bringing yeah. Barry back, CC and Bear, I think they're actually quite similar players. So I do, I don't think that's necessarily a downgrade. And then bringing in Bouchard is, I think, huge for us. So CC is a downgrade for to Larson, though. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, downgrade to Larson, but still. But CC and Bouchard are both upgrades to Bear. Yes. Uh, that's nothing against Bear. I have nothing but respect for the guy. He's he's an unbelievable hockey player. He represents his his. Uh, his community. His community so well, and they should ever everybody here in Edmonton and in his his community should be unbelievably proud of him. Uh, but I, I I do think it was, I think he was a bit of a surplus, and I'm okay with the trade. I know Oilers fans hate one for ones, but it was a good one for one in my opinion. So, a decent one for one. I'm happy with it. I think Vogel is, is what we needed. So I think that's what uh, that that was. That brings us to the Oilers. I, I still think they'll finish second. I think they'll be challenging for that first spot with Vegas. It all depends on injuries, man. It all depends on... I think the Oilers' forward depth is, is much better than it was in years past. I think that's going to be a strength of ours this year. Uh, it all depends on how Tippett uses everybody, honestly. Yeah. Um, and as long as everyone stays healthy. Yeah, I mean, we're always going to have injuries, right? Like, I think our biggest our biggest injury is going to, like, Nurse is going to be our biggest guy. Nurse, Smith, and obviously McDavid. But even McDavid, man, like, Dardanel, or sorry, Leon Dreisaitl can be the number one center and Nuge can move to second, second pairing, line, right? Yeah. Like, I, I don't think, like, no, again, McDavid's the greatest player in the world right now. I don't think there's anybody who can argue that. Um, but I, I do think the forward depth is enough. To where we can mitigate a small yeah, two game depth. loss or yeah. another suspension for elbowing a guy <laughs> for whatever reason. Like <laughs> it's yeah. just yeah, more defense and goal tending that Yeah. Just so, to be a little scared of. I completely agree. So So yeah, that's uh that's our recap of the Battle of Alberta. It's gonna be an unbelievable hockey season. Very much looking forward to it. And I guess we'll look at the end of the season to see how our projections did. Could you imagine if we got all of them right? That'd actually be pretty That'd be pretty sweet. So yeah. for the Western Canadian teams, we're going with Edmonton second, Vancouver. I'm, I'm sticking with Vancouver third, Edmonton second, Calgary fifth. Fifth. Yeah. And then Winnipeg fourth. I'm putting him fourth. Officially, we're putting him fourth. I'm going to say third, but... Cool. That's all good. All right, so tune in uh, in this weekend's episode for the podcast, and uh, we're looking forward to discussing the Champions League and, and a bunch of other stuff happening in the world of sports right now. What an exciting time to be a Canadian sports fan, eh? Oh, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon.